A vortex refers to something spinning around an axis. In the wildland fire arena, vortices like fire whirls are almost always observed along flaming fronts, whether at ground or landscape scale. To transfer knowledge from fire scientists to boots on the ground about a lesser known but potentially dangerous fire behavior phenomenon called the counter-rotating vortex pair, this video We'll use the 2020 El Dorado wildfire as a backdrop to explore historical knowledge, anatomy of, and conditions in which they form. Awareness of counter-rotating vortex pairs may help with future tactical decisions. The counter-rotating vortex pair has been scientifically documented and written about by fire scientists for over 50 years, but is not widely known or specifically taught to the firefighter community. In the article entitled, Review of Vortices in Wildland Fire, Jason Forthover of the U.S. Forest Service's Missoula Fire Sciences Lab and Scott Goodrick of the Southern Research Station state that the key features of this vortex type is the paired nature of the vortices rotating in opposite directions. These vortices often occur along the flanks of the fire and can also be observed in the main plume at the head of the fire. In 1976, a split column with two approximately 100-foot diameter vortices rotating in opposite directions was observed on the New Minor Fire in central Wisconsin. Their rotation was relatively slow compared to a fire whirl, but the columns would occasionally collapse and spill over the flanks of the fire, resulting in rapid lateral spread. As firefighters commonly anchor, flank, and pinch to suppress fires, a counter-rotating vortex pair and the conditions that may lead to their formation are important to understand. Let's take a look at the anatomy of a counter-rotating vortex pair. This three-dimensional simulation was created to illustrate what is believed to have occurred on the El Dorado fire in Southern California on September 17, 2020. During a burnout operation, a large column formed after dark on the lee side of the San Bernardino mountain range. Investigators determined that a counter-rotating vortex pair likely formed by analyzing needle freeze directions and evaluating observed fire behavior and atmospheric conditions. Note the anatomy of the counter-rotating vortex pair in this particular situation. Deep flaming zones from heavy fuel accumulation and extremely dry fuels resulting in a dense column that acts to block the wind. Two columns rotating in opposite directions, counterclockwise on the left flank of the fire and clockwise on the right flank. This area of the fire was protected from the general southwest wind flow on the lee side of the San Bernardino mountain range. The column was tall enough to reach the wind shear zone of the atmosphere. Charlie Morton, a squad boss on the Big Bear Hotshots, was overtaken by fire and perished as the result of fire behavior caused by a counter-rotating vortex pair. Recognizing conditions for potential counter-rotating vortex pair formation. It is important to understand that predicting the formation of a counter-rotating vortex pair is impossible. However, Certain fire behavior, terrain, and atmospheric attributes may foreshadow the development of a vortex pair. In this time lapse of the Roaring Lion Fire from 2017, Mark Finney, research forester at the Rocky Mountain Research Station, highlights key characteristics of a counter rotating vortex pair. <laughs> Thank you.
This is of the Roaring Lion fire in Montana. And we'll point out a few features of this. It's probably one of the best time-lapse videos that I've seen of a couple of features that are important to the El Dorado fire. So you're going to start to see some spinning of the plume on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side. You'll see that the plume is spinning in opposite directions. Opposite directions. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to see in just a minute an excursion. Uh, the smoke is going to kind of stream down away from the fire and spread out into the valley floor like it just did. And in a moment, you'll see that there are a number of spot fires down there that begin to grow and get drawn back into the main plume. Fire behavior characteristics such as deep flaming zones and long residence times and heavily accumulated fuels may create a column and could result in conditions ripe for counter-rotating vortex pair formation. Watching for persistent plume rotation and the column splitting into two will help fire practitioners recognize formation of a counter-rotating vortex pair. This is caused pretty much just like a rock in the middle of a river. It's obstructing the wind flow and the water around the rock has to create eddies on the lee side. Now the plume is not a rock, it's not impervious to the wind, but when you create a very strong plume, most of the wind does not penetrate the plume and disperse it, it has to flow around it. And as it flows around it, it starts to catch the edges there and rotate them. And so you're seeing in the, the upper left-hand diagram there that these are counter-rotating pairs. They, make the plume into a kidney-shaped structure rather than in a conical-shaped structure. Recognizing topography that blocks or channels wind flow, such as the lee side of a ridge or a mountain range, is also a key indicator because of resulting atmospheric effects like wind shear. Wind shear at ridgetop level has been shown to create vorticity. In conclusion, we know that counter-rotating vortex pairs can pose significant dangers to operators in the fire environment. The conditions that may lead to their formation are known, but exactly when and where is impossible to predict. Understanding the fire behavior, topographic, and atmospheric conditions that lead to counter-rotating vortex pair generation are essential tools for fire practitioners operating in the modern fire environment.